This is IFV, the web space with your dose of business and financial news. In full view, we're making your business our business. Welcome to In Full View. I'm Marcella Palmer. We're bringing you the week's medium and small business news from New York sports clubs at 23rd Street and 8th Avenue in Manhattan, one of millions of businesses around the world observing the 40th anniversary of Earth Day. New York sports clubs has opened its doors to the public on Earth Day 2010 for a free spinning workout using cycling equipment enhanced with the Green Revolution, a new invention that converts human effort generated from aerobic workouts into clean, renewable energy. Candles in the cycling studio are lighting the room to avoid leaving any environmental footprint. We have the Green Revolution bike tier, which um, actually creates wattage, which helps power this facility. So to celebrate Earth Day and lessening everybody's carbon footprint on the environment, we had a special class today with no lights and a drummer, something very earthy and, and organic. We're focusing at the moment on the cardio fitness because this is really something that people can feel that they're part of. Like you can have solar panels on the roof of your building and that's great, it you know, produces a tremendous amount of clean electricity or wind turbines can be up and those things are, are, can be there and they need to be there. But you and I, we see those things and we appreciate them but we're not really active participants. You know, with, with the fitness equipment, when you're in the health club, you're working out, now you know because it's telling you how many watts you've generated. You know what you're doing, and it really kind of personalizes it. And it also, I think, leads to uh, sustainable behavior change because now you say, okay, I know what it takes to produce 100 watts. It's not, you know, it's no, you know, walk in the park. I mean, I'm really sweating here. So then you're like, you know what? I've left my closet light on for the past week. Maybe I'll go home and turn it off, you know? So people start to appreciate and it kind of connects, it connects the two things together. So uh, we really like the, we really like where people are doing it. And I do, but I do think there's other applications that we can also look at. We've had these bikes since about December and the members absolutely love it because you can actually see how much wattage you're, you're expending when you're on the bike. So it's actually the equivalent of lighting up a light bulb type of thing. So usually wattage is around, I believe, 30 to 70 for the average person um, riding the bike. But that 30 watts is a lot. It really is. We've had some very, very good discussions with the uh, uh, Department of Energy in, in, in Washington and there's a tremendous enthusiasm about what we're doing because it does really tie, it ties things together. It's definitely, it's renewable energy and we're using the same technologies as you'd find for a solar or, or a wind or a hydro installation um, and, you know, it ties in healthy, you know, a fitness and, you know, addressing obesity but also tying it back into the environment. So I'm really optimistic that uh, you know that we will be able to for our customers and and retroactively be able to allow them to take advantage of some incentives for uh, you know either whether it's tax breaks or some instances it's cash back based on you know the, your, your investment cost. More on Worldwide Earth Day and green practices in just a moment. But first, here's Shay Maltzby with the index performance outlook for the week ending Friday, April twenty third, twenty ten. The Nasdaq closed the week up about two percent. The Russell 2000 is up roughly 3.8%. The Russell Microcap Index closes up nearly 4.2%. The S&P Midcap 400 is up approximately 3.6%. And Canada's S&P TSX Small Cap ends the week up approaching 1.1%. Here's a glimpse of Earth Day 2010 and other positive green efforts happening around the world every day. Putting more wind power into the energy mix not only brings down CO2 emissions, but the price of electricity as well. That's the key finding of a new independent study commissioned by the European Wind Energy Association. The main message is that the more wind you put into the system, the, the lower the cost of electricity for the consumer. So basically, because of the way power markets are structured currently, it means that those technologies that have the lowest fuel and operation costs come, comes in first and they push out the more expensive and the more polluting technologies. Well, plug-in hybrids, I think, are sort of the killer app in automotive technology. They're the best of both worlds between electric cars and the flexibility of a hybrid. 
So a plug-in hybrid is one vehicle where maybe your first 40 miles of the day are all electric. Monday through Friday, you may never use gasoline. But if you wanted to drive to Vegas on the weekend, you have the flexibility to do that, and you can put gasoline in the tank as a backup. We call plug-in hybrids electric vehicles with safety nets. To increase the awareness of cotton's recyclability, several years ago we started a campaign called Cotton from Blue to Green, in which we've encouraged consumers as well as businesses to donate denim jeans. That's converted into insulation and donated to uh, communities in need. Cotton is an ideal fiber for new technologies such as nanotech. As a matter of fact, researchers at Cornell University have developed a process that would allow for your cotton clothing to actually power electronic devices. Another interesting use of cotton byproducts comes from a company called Ecovative Design. They've invented a process that actually uses the unused parts of the cotton plant and it's converted into materials that's used in packaging like styrofoam. The environmental advantage to this is it's biodegradable. Visitors to Las Vegas may notice more green in the desert. That's because the city's hotels, restaurants, and destinations are becoming more environmentally aware and adopting innovative ways to make Vegas a greener community. And going green isn't just a fad for the Las Vegas tourism industry, it's a way of doing business. Greening in city center is more than just environmental responsibility. I think it's a leadership um, imperative for our company, and I think it's what business um, has the obligation to do right now. I think that as we are um, growing the world's population, and as we know that our uh, natural resources are finite, I think that business will show the way to use those more responsibly and um, have less problems in the future as our populations grow. According to Planet Green, if you take the cycling out of the gym and into the street for every mile you bike instead of drive, you'll eliminate an average of 0.91 pounds of carbon dioxide that would have been released by your vehicle. Just one of many earth-friendly lifestyle and business changes you can incorporate into your day. That's all for this week from the IFV News team. Thanks for joining us from New York Sports Clubs at 23rd Street and 8th Avenue in Manhattan. Be sure to check back every day right here at IFVNews.com for the latest on what's happening around the globe in the medium and small business world.